Hey guys, so in the last video, we I showed you guys how to do the to install FastQC and how to execute it and use it and sort of interpret what you can read out there. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the first toolkit that uh, that you can use to analyze your FastQ files. A toolkit is basically a bunch of scripts, a bunch of programs that someone wrote that will do analysis for you. And this toolkit is called EA Utils. You can just type it into Google. I don't know why the actual web page doesn't come up anymore, but um, it has been moved. So you can just click this right here and it'll take you to the website of EA Utils. It's on GitHub, which is also sort of a repository where you can, where you can download different programs or different toolkits, not just for sequencing, let live for anything pretty much. And here you can read what EA Utils has um, to offer. It has a lot of different commands that can do a lot of different things. So for instance, you can use fastq um, hyphen or minus MS, uh, MCF, which will, and it says it right here, scan a sequence file for adapters. Okay, so in case you do still have adapters left, or you can also provide certain adapter sequences, and then cut them, or it all can also um, look at the quality score of your, um, of your files, and then trim them or clip them. This is actually what we're going to do here. Uh, what else you can do is, for example, if you have your samples with certain barcodes and you uh, did not demultiplex using the sequencing machine, this is really easy to do with the Illumina sequencing machine because you can provide the machine with the barcodes bar barcodes or with the indices and you can make the, you, you can, after sequencing, program the Illumina machine to just do all of this demultiplexing for you. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to do it by yourself, here's what you can use. This uh, tool from the toolkit, um, FastQ minus uh, Multex. And if you have, for example, paired end reads, uh, paired end reads, yeah, this this means that you, in, in your sequencer, you use to, you sequence from both sides because your sequence, for instance, is too long. You know, the longest, uh, the Illumina, for example, allows you to sequence is 300 base pairs from one side. So if you want to sequence more than 300, you can say, I want to do paired end sequencing 300 from one side and 300 from the other side. And then you get two reads, two FastQ files, R1 and R2, read one and read two. And you can use something like FastQ join to now join these together using different quality scores and an algorithm that will make sure that they're perfectly uh, joined. And it's very important to, you can't just, you know, you can't just put them together. You have to use a algorithm uh, for this that, that takes under consideration many different factors. Now we will download this. You can download it from here as a, as a file or which is much easier if you open up the terminal, CTRL Alt T or you search here terminal. You can now uh, just say sudo apt-get install. Yeah, so sudo apt-get apt-get or minus get install EA utils, hyphen utils. I already downloaded it, so I don't have to do it again, but you type in your password. And uh, for me, because you know it says it's already the newest version, I don't have to download it. But for you, it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna install this? It's gonna take away 20 megabytes of your hard drive and you have to type in Y for yes. Now, once you did that, uh, EA Utils is installed. You now have the ability to run these commands that you can see right here on the terminal. You can run it just like this and then it's gonna say, hey, you didn't provide me with any information. So here's the help file because I think you're stupid. So there you go. It gives you the uh, help file of this command and then you can read what you can do with this. You can do it here in it or you can also click obviously on the website and it's going to tell you uh, what it does and how to use it. So here it says, it says exactly what it says here by the way. That this is how you use it. You go fastq hyphen mcf and you have to then provide or you can then provide it with options and the options are listed here. So what uh, do you want to do? Um, you know, there are many different variables, but you can, of course, always stick with the defaults if you like, um, if you want to be on a safe side, but you should always consider, you know, you know your samples the best, you know how long your sequences should be in the end, so you can give them a minimum remaining sequence length. You know how how, how long they are, so you can also give them a maximum remaining sequence length. And uh, this, is, this is stuff that you have to interpret by, uh, because you know your experiments best. 
Now, uh, something else you can set is the quality threshold causing base removal. This is something else that FastQ uh, um, MCF does. It trims your sequences, your reads, so that the bad quality reads, they're removed or they're trimmed at least. Um, and the, the default is 10. So what does this 10 mean? It means that if you watch the other video before this one on FastQC and how to install it, I explained that the FRED quality score means if you have 10, it means that one in 10 times this base pair would be um, sequenced incorrectly. Okay, one in 10, that's the probability. Uh, so you can set that. Um, and we will do that now with our FASTQ file that we have downloaded in the very first or second video, which I have located here, if you remember, public and SRA, LS, there you go. There are some other files now there as well, which I added. You can remove those, RM, yeah? And you can write test. I put in a wildcard here, which will also delete this one. Yep. If you want to now use the FASTQ MCF on this, you just type in FASTQ MCF. Now we follow this um, usage information right here, options, because we want to set the minus Q to whatever like it's 10 we can just so say we want 20 okay um and then you can uh, or we can just leave it in the default as well you know it doesn't really matter and uh, next it says you have to provide an adapter adapters.fa file this will include the sequences in faster format the sequences of your adapters if you don't want to do adapter trimming because maybe you don't have an adapter left you have to turn this off you can't just continue you need to do it says it right here Specify, uh, specify N um, slash A to turn off adapter clipping and just use filters. So instead of giving it an adapter.fa file, we say N A. Now we continue. It says, what's the read? Our read is called SR something something, if you remember, but we know for sure that it ends with fastq, so we can go SR wildcard.fastq. Now, if you have any other files that start with sr and then end in fastq then you will either have an error because it can process several files at once or it'll just do this for every single file now that's why we you make sure i know for for fact for a fact that in this folder i don't have any other fastq files named like this so i can save a lot of time i don't have to write the whole thing out next we want to uh, specify an output file it should all this stuff that it will be created here should not be written on the same file i want it to go into a different file and they have an option for this here it's minus o output file so we type in minus o and now we provide it with a file name which we can uh, name um what did we say it's a quality score of 10 so we just go sr uh, sr q10 dot fast q you don't have to write dot fast q by the way you but you can still look at it just normally but it helps you to sort of identify your files and press enter now it will run this program and it'll tell you for example that uh, this is how many reads you have now and uh, this many reads were too short after clipping so they have been removed and we can now look at these two by i'm just going to open up a new terminal and i'm going to go into my fastqc folder if you remember and run fastqc this is in the video prior to this one it opens the graphical user interface and I can open my files. I know where they are, not here. Go back, NCBI public SRA. And there we have my two FASTQ files, the one that we had previously and the new one. So we can open up both. And here you go. Uh, this was the first one, we looked at it previously and it says, you know, there's the sequence length is 55 to 450 and um, the total sequences are this many, and this is how the quality score looked. Now we have this new one. First thing you'll notice is the sequence length, length has changed. Why? So the reason for that is because it got trimmed from both sides. The quality, they didn't meet the quality uh, recommendation or the quality settings that we set, and that's why they were trimmed. Also, the total sequence number changed because there were, if you remember, a certain amount of uh, sequences were too short after clipping, so they were removed. And this is 
also some informative uh, inf important information because if it says they are like 50,000 you know mm, something went wrong and now let's look at the per base quality score still doesn't look good it looks better for sure yeah it looks better but it doesn't look good and that's just something you can't really change you could of course say i'm just gonna cut out every sequence from from here right i just want to analyze everything that is this long However, if you if you do that, um, then that's not very good for your alignment. So the shorter your reads, the worse is your alignment, uh, or the worse the, the less accurate it is. Uh, longer reads always better to align. You can rely on that better. However, um, you could of course the theoretically do that, and in some cases that this would work as well. For instance, if the the target genome that you align it to is actually short. So in that case, if you just sequenced happen to sequence three hundred base pairs, but you just need one hundred and fifty you can go ahead and cut out the rest, you know, and then you will lose all of this. In this case, the quality isn't very good. Uh, you could still work with this, and we will just because we, you know, this is just examples that we, that we do here. But I recommend to try and get something that looks more of, you know, falling somewhere here. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is EA Utils. It has a lot of other different uh, things as well. For instance, the FastQ join uh, tool where you can provide it with options such as the minimum overlap this should have and then just uh, give it the read one and read two and an output file maybe as well um, and then you press enter and it's gonna combine those files there are many uh, different toolkits out there um, i prefer this one if you have another preference write it in the comments below um, and go to nextgenerationsequencinghq.com to learn how to use stuff like this in a bioinformatical pipeline, which will, which is a script, a program basically that you write and execute, let's say on a folder with a hundred samples, and it's gonna do the exact same analysis method for all of them. And you can put different and uh, different methods. You could just combine them all and have outputs such as even graphs and. and tables full of information uh, with each of those samples uh, learn how to do that at, learn how to do that at nextgenerationsequencinghq.com and uh, come back for more videos